go-to girl last night. Subi was scheduled to lead the RT, which she did very well. And then uh, I don't think we had anyone scheduled for the Nishringa prayers. So her sister Archie did a good job with the Nishringa prayers. And then the Gold family was supposed to lead the Kirtan afterwards, but Ras Vilas passed it to guess who at the last minute. So Subi also led the Kirtan last night as well. And then what happens first thing this morning? We ask Kapil, everybody is overwhelmingly voting for Kapil to lead the first kirtan, but he passes and 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 then goes to Subi again. So actually that bit about Kapil was just in, in joking, in good fun there. <laughs> so good to have you, Subi. Um, Thank you. You're you're getting a lot more experience, which which means that uh, the sky is the limit. There's no limit to what you can do in the future. I remember there's an old picture dating back to 1991 or 92 when uh, we just bought the land for the temple. Uh, we weren't going to do the groundbreaking until 96. We weren't going to start construction until 98. But the, a great religious singer, I don't know, do any of you remember the name Hariam Sharan? Yes, Prabhuji, I have seen his picture with you and Vai Mataji at the temple. He, he's a very well-known uh, bhajan singer in India. He, he was a great personality. He was at one time. That, this is uh, 30 years ago. He was, he was at that time the number one religious singer in all of India. And he visited America. He did a benefit concert in Salt Lake City. Uh, to raise money for the temple construction. Um, but there's a picture, as Rakesh says, there's a picture of him standing with his wife, Nandini, and my Bobby and myself, younger versions of us, right on this site, the northeast corner of what was to be the future temple, temple construction site. So uh, actually he told the story that he had a guru and he wanted, his guru was, had trained him up in Krishna consciousness. And then the guru announced that he was leaving the city. He was leaving all human contact and going off into the Himalayas to achieve samadhi. And Hariam Charan was very attached to his guru. He wanted to go with his guru into the Himalayas. And the guru told him, no. He said, you can't. He said, your, your mission will be to stay in society and sing the praises of Krishna. That will be your tapasya, not not to go into the Himalayas, but to remain in an urban lifestyle and sing the praise of Krishna. So even though he was very wealthy and very famous, he still had that spirit of detachment. He was doing it all as a service, basically to his guru, not not for name and fame. Mm -hmm. He did that whole concert uh, without any pay or remuneration at, at all. I'm sure he's passed on by now. He was in his 60s then, 30 years ago. Yeah, he, he's uh, no more, but uh, 
thank you prabhu ji for sharing this story about him i just thought that he is just a great mm-hmm. singer but it's good to know that he was a, a great devotee as well mm-hmm. the verse that we're talking of monday tuesday and wednesday now is idami pumsas tapasa sutashiva sutashya shukta shatibudi aviti tauriti kavi bidu yad utama shoka gananar banana says if you have talent use that talent to glorify the lord so your girls all all your girls and all your your boys kapil your girls your your girls and your boys both are very talented and they're young they have 50 60 years ahead of them to improve their talents to sharpen their skills and to you know every time they open their mouths ishan shivan uh subi and i'm sure archie will be the same way bhavana vanita they're uh doing service for krishna and not only purify themselves but they're also attracting people to krishna consciousness in terms of what we have to share that happened in the past week i just want to say that i think the best part of janmashtami were the kirtans i don't know if you agree with me but we had a we had from 7 till 1 we had a 6 hour 6 hour kirtan and i think that was just the most powerful part of janmashtami especially going into the last hour with uh uh anusri and then uh ishan and then jai krishna leading the arti man it was so so very powerful but what what does anybody else have to share oh, by the way uh we like to talk i think today about the the churning of the ocean of milk so if you have any thoughts or insights to share keep those in mind or write it down a note or something and we'll get to that in a minute but let's go around um starting with onkar uh or let's start with the kirtan family let's start with akash and subi then go to sarabi then kapil and onkar everybody share a little bit something about this past week want to share something yes um jai roji nothing much happened last week but there was an ambassador event in our school and mm-hmm. i got an award this week i mean not last week yeah this what week sort of, what sort of an award was it it was like a friendship award so that means you're the most friendly person in your class yeah i think that's okay. what it is it's nice yeah if you have a talent if you have an ability then don't just um squander it for yourself but share it you know you can be a mentor you can be a teacher like for instance ishan is there for his brother shivan and you have the opportunity also to be there for your sister archi as well i'm sure she idolizes you and uh, we'll do whatever you say so use that influence as a big sister to uh, help her come along as well and nurture her talents and abilities rakesh hari krishna hari krishna everyone hari krishna so prabhu ji yeah like as you mentioned uh, about the beautiful janmashtami celebration so the highlight for for me and our family were attending the two janmashtami celebration one at spanish folk temple and then at salt lake city and followed by prabhupad appearance day so and then yesterday uh, that saturday program was also pretty pretty ecstatic and the talk you gave on bringing light to life so i think this week was full of light spiritual light for for us and uh, hope we 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 can be in that light forever so that was a pretty pretty good week for us chai archi a word from archi i just saw it hover in the view there <laughs> i made them hey there she is i don't know what that is she made a shivlinga by her playing clay okay <laughs> that's what in she in fact i have a, a little temple <laughs> she has a little temple yeah she is in fact i have two <laughs> uh, yeah she will have stories but we so she i'll show you what she is doing right now she was kind of doing her prayers she has two temples uh, in her, for her place so she is busy with her own worship right now she just keeps 
her own altars, uh, altar and, and the gods. So she is busy with her own prayers. That's she, at her age. Extraordinary. Reminds me of Prabhupada when he was her age. So yeah, that was our week, Prabhuji. Thank you. Hari 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 Ba. Sarabi. Um, saw, saw you in uh, Ashutosh at the temple last night, and I think uh, for Janmashtami, one of your one or two of your children were present too, wasn't it? Om was there on Janmashtami, and Anya and Om both were there yesterday. Uh, so uh, highlight is definitely my gen, our Janmashtami celebration at home and at the temple, and but yesterday the table we were sharing with the gentleman he said he was into the it and we started talking and um i told i was working in tomex before which became demandware and salesforce but i uh, jumped to the new company and uh, he said i know that company uh, there was one surabhi pande do you know her um <laughs> I, she referred me to that company before. So I said, I am that Surabhi Pandey. And he laughed and we laughed. <laughs> so you're a legend in that company then, right? <laughs> so yeah, but it was in 2016 when he asked me to refer through some Indian friends and all that. And so I referred, but he could not get the job just because of his um, background some documents were missing for him, so he could not jo join that. But he's working in SOFI, which is a financial company for the students' loan and everything. Was last night his first visit to the temple? He said that he is going to the Spanish poor more often oh. than coming to the Salt Lake City. That's what he told me. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, sort of stout. Yeah. yeah. yeah, right. yeah. Right. His name is Prakash. Prakash, okay. Yeah. We, you could have asked him that I know that Surbi, <laughs> asking for that uh, referral bonus that you didn't give him at that time. <laughs> Ashish Mahajan used to work for Tomax too. He moved yes. on as well to Salesforce, I believe. Yeah, he moved on. Now the uh, office is totally, building is totally shut down. So everybody is working from home and to the different teams. No team resides here in uh, Salt Lake City now. Okay. So we pretty mixed week, uh, I would say. Uh, I am the last man standing here. <laughs> but at the end, Jan uh, I couldn't agree more, Prabhu. Very transcendental celebration. And it's also great to see the new generation and their contribution, and also them getting the inspiration from others as well. So it's a great combination. And uh, Prabhu, sometimes when you are in a situation like this, you also appreciate the amount of love, support, and care you receive from the community, from your friends. So I have nothing but gratitude for you. Let us know if there's more we can do. Bring you meals or <laughs> whatever, whatever we can do. You, I will you're, you're, you look like you're all alone in the house there. <laughs> that's the that's the silver lining proof. <laughs> Now, now, don't forget, anything you say is on Facebook, you know. It's yes. A record, so. <laughs> <laughs> <Be careful. laughs> so, Omkar, you, you, we, these will have to be like, almost like, this will have to almost be like your farewell speech, you know. This is going to be so sad. Yeah. What, Sorry. Tell us how we can become humble and sincere like yourself. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept my obeisances. Uh, uh, well, that's the first thing. We should always offer obeisances to everybody. So thank you for answering that question. Yeah. I what don't feel uh, qualified at all uh, to uh, And never speak think anything. of yourself as qualified. There's two drops of wisdom right there within the first 15 seconds. Please continue. I, I'm, I'm really grateful that uh, I... Gratitude. Yes, that's another essential point. Sorry, I won't interrupt anymore. 
No, I really feel don't feel uh, qualified to be in this assembly, but uh, by the God's grace, Krishna grace, I got to be a part of it. I feel very grateful, and uh, uh, I just want to share that uh, last week uh, I got to know that uh, uh, my degree might be finishing soon, and uh, I might to leave to India uh, to continue my studies or uh, to look for further opportunities. so i uh, uh, probably will be uh, moving there uh, soon probably in one week or so so it also uh, very suddenly i got to know it but uh, it took me some uh, time to uh, digest it that i will be going out and also i got a little uh, anxious how to share with the others because uh, from yesterday i started uh, sharing with all the and, and when i was shared with they all were seeing a little sad so i was feeling very bad to share it all with others but uh, i feel it would be very important for me to share otherwise if i would i would be gone then it would be more more feel bad to them that omkar has gone without telling us so i feel it is my uh, uh, part of duty kind of to share but uh, it was uh, really a great uh, time i had to spend i i got to spend here uh, i came to utah uh, i had before i came to utah i had never heard of utah actually i just applied to 10 colleges and i got only accepted utah and uh, i came here and uh, i wanted to stay with devotees at that time so i was looking for opportunities i had sent an email from india to charu prabhu actually my uh, superior in goa had sent an email so from uh, by charu prabhu's mercy uh, i got a i got a, a place to stay in the temple and i was so happy to go to stand and till date i'm i'm very happy to be able to stay in temple that i get to meet with so many devotees to stay with devotees to uh, be able to interact with them and it's like a uh, almost like a home situation here home uh, family like environment here that i never missed india at all during my stay so uh, so it was wonderful and all the devotees are here very senior to me and i got to learn a lot of them especially from charu prabhu kapil prabhu rakesh prabhu and all others and uh, it it, it is uh, i am always uh, will feel the part of here and uh, even after going back or uh, i may try a few other things but uh, probably uh, from the th- currently i have been put on a period where i have to uh, immediately finish up my work and then proceed to india and i can look for further options there but uh, Uh, it so happened so suddenly that i couldn't get a chance to react but still in uh, the janmashtami and the things were so uh, happy and pleasing at that i i forget all of these things in between but uh, that's what i my concern was that if i may have to leave so soon how how can i able to share with others the gratitude that i have with all of them the respect that i have with all of you so today i feel it's the chance is the my opportunity to not all of us are here but whoever are here i would i really uh, want to share my gratitude and respect with all of you that uh, the time i spent with you was a really a loving time in my uh, in my life of two years here and uh, i have a lot of respect for all of you i have a lot of love for all of you and uh, even uh, i if i go back i will be uh, remembering you and uh, keep praying for you and uh, while going i don't want to uh, hurt anybody uh, so i beg forgiveness if there was any mistake from my side in any time in last two years so i want to beg forgiveness and uh, uh, give me a blessing so i can uh, progress in my spiritual life and serve my spiritual master uh, even after going to india uh, thank you very much wow and if you miss anybody we can always uh, tell them that you left a message here on facebook so that they can go and refer to this How many years have you been in America now studying at University of Utah? Uh 2 years a uh, little more than 2 years. Um you know Govinda uh, came back from Washington DC he did the bhumi puja for a new temple they're going to build there and he was talking about the fundraising they did. <clears throat> they got 7 million dollars worth of pledges one man gave a check for a million dollars alone. they raise another $320,000 worth of cash so there's obviously a lot of enthusiasm and support for building a new 10 million dollar temple in Washington DC 
So we got to talking about Utah, and we were thinking, uh, I said, we, uh, you know, uh, we don't have any sectarianism. We don't have any division between our members. Everybody's working together like one big family. Um, uh, we're generally respected, I think, by the community in general, so that the ground is fertile. If there were ever like a really big $1 million donor or something like that, um, we would be, we would come up on the radar as a worthy place to give. And then I just said, but I don't even know what we do with, you know, if someone gave like, we're just fantasizing, you know, just talking. I don't even know what, we, but devotees should think big because Krishna is limitless. So we were just thinking, well, and I was thinking, well, you know, we've, we've got two temples, we've got a radio station, they're paid for. I mean, I said, what would we do if someone gave us a million dollars or or what cause is left to raise money for? And Govinda looked at me like I was an idiot, which is true. And he said, you don't know? You don't know the next step in Utah development? He said, well, I'll tell you. He said, we need to get a place where university students can live, a Krishna house like they have in University of Florida in Gainesville. They pay um, half the rent in exchange for attending Mangalarti and doing services in the temple and attending classes. And as soon as he said that, I realized, yes, we need such a place. And when we get it, we'll call it the Onkar Josi Krishna House. <laughs> because we got, yeah. we got the idea from you. I mean, we, you, you're being living in the temple for two years showed us in a way that theory could never have done, that words could never have done, how much we need to interface with the University of Utah students. We need to overlap. We need to give them a Krishna house in which they can pursue their mundane studies, but also uh, practice their Krishna consciousness. Uh, you know, we need to take care of body and soul, but we can't neglect, I mean, body and soul is a, a, just a, a phrase that which basically refers to earning a living, having food and roof, but one needs to also cultivate self-realization at the same time. So academic knowledge is just, uh, it's, it's not going to stand one in good stead in the long term. So that that's our obligation is to provide a, a a means where university students can uh, live in the temple own building and pay less rent, which will help them physically, but spiritually they can also uh, contract to engage in devotional service. So, um, yeah, we're we're gonna be on the lookout. It took me ten years to find the property in Salt Lake City. Um, I don't know how long it will take us to find, but that that's our next our next landmark, our next milestone, and it's all thanks to you and your good example and every all the good things that you've done as a University of Utah student living in the temple has opened up a world of possibilities for us. So that's your legacy here. I, I would like to give all credit to my Shiksha Guru in India, by whose uh support and guidance, I could stay here. Um, he was there to guide me at every step uh, to how to manage studies, how to manage sadhana, and uh, everything to balance. So I give all credit to him because of his great guidance and blessings and support and of all the devotees here and of Kuchara Prabhu's that I could uh, uh, carry this out here. Who is your Siksha Guru? Uh, my Siksha Guru is... Uh, uh, his grace Kartikeya Prabhu, he's in Bangalore. Kartikeya. Mm -hmm. So, Omkar, a little bit about the churning of the ocean of milk. Uh, Do you, you have the Bhagavatam in front of you? Yes. It's, there's several verses, starting with 1st Canto, 3rd Chapter, 16th verse. It's just a very short purport. Just add any additional comments that you might have. Okay. So, Canto 1, chapter... Uh, shall I read all the first verse, verse 16, with the transcendent purport? Yeah. Okay. So, it's Canto 1, chapter 3, text 16. Uh, the translation is, 
the 11th incarnation of the lord took the form of a tortoise whose shell served as a pivot for the mandara chala hill which was being used as a churning rod by the theist and atheist of the universe purport once both the atheist and the theist were engaged in producing nectar from the sea so that all of them could become deathless by drinking it at that time mandara chala hill was used as churning rod and the shell of the lord tortoise the incarnation of godhead became the resting place pivot of the hill in the sea water okay that sounds pretty exotic can you bring that home to some of our listeners yeah so i'll start with the pretty uh, basic background so this was a, a time of very ancient era uh, and this was uh, this was the story of demons and devotee uh, demons and demigods so in the universal affairs there are uh, uh, demigods who are saintly uh, saintly people and who are worshipers of lord vishnu and they engage in the administrations of the whole universe and there are some people who are not devotees of lord vishnu they are called demons who engage in uh, uh, in sinful activities and who are into many other things so there is always fight between these two people and there are humans in between like us we are here so there are always fight between demigods and demons so this is a time when uh, there was one fight there was a chance there was an event of fight in between uh, demigods and demons and demons they became at one time very powerful due to blessings of their spiritual master shukracharya and due to and all, all the brahmanas and their king was uh, of the name bali maharaj and they became so powerful that they decided to attack the the heavenly planets and the kingdom of lord indra and they attacked indra's kingdom and due to their strong power uh, they they could defeat indra and they defeated indra and uh, they they gain uh, kingdom to all over the universe so now uh, the, now they were the the original creators of the universe so all the demigods were in uh, afraid and they didn't have anything that any position so they requested uh, 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 lord brahma to for help so lord brahma requested him uh, further to lord vishnu and lord vishnu then guided them they told them that you now uh, call the all the demons for a churning of ocean churning of milk ocean you churn that milk ocean and you take nectar from him and you take that nectar and when you drink it you will become immortal and once you become immortal you can attack the demons and then uh, you you can take back your your own kingdom once you become immortal but to do that you need the help of the demons because without their help we will not able to do it so they call, they called bali maharaj and they requested for them and in the what's in, that in called? the what's that called when two enemies agree to set aside their hostilities in order to achieve a common cause what's the english word for that do you know it uh compromise that but there's another word it's used in the bhagavatam probably uses the word anybody know the demi gods and the demons which are always fighting and this was at the suggestion of vishnu vishnu you know he the, the demi gods are trying to figure out how to regain their 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 positions on the heavenly planets and vishnu is suggesting something that would seem to be contradictory right because if they work with the demons to produce the nectar and the demons drink the nectar then the demons will be even more powerful so it's 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 one of those things that only the lord really knows what his plan is but truth so, yes did everyone hear that truth repeating it truth 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 t r u c e lord vishnu suggested to the demigods that they propose that they go to the demons and they propose a truce go ahead onkar just wanted to get that word out there yeah so this was the so the so bali maharaj the king of the demons in exchange of nectar for all of his population of demons agreed to participate in this truce and uh, 
then there then there they, they called a big snake called vasuki to uh, and then they also took uh, the mandara chala hill to be used as a churning rod and vasuki as a churning rope to uh, to uh, to churn the ocean but due to the heaviness of the mandara chala hill they couldn't lift it so they again had to pray to lord vishnu to help them so lord vishnu took uh, the mandara chala hill on his hand and he himself put it on the on the uh, on the milk ocean but when he when he put it he again the due to the heaviness of the uh, hill it drowned in the ocean and they couldn't churn it so they again had a problem so they again prayed to lord vishnu and lord vishnu again came to help and this time lord vishnu became okay, a doctor so let's, let's just keep count here okay so first of all lord vishnu suggests the truth right mm-hmm. secondly he picks up the mandara mountain and carries it to the ocean and then thirdly he supports it within the water on the on his back as an incarnation of the tortoise so so let's just keep count as onkar continues to tell the story of how many times lord vishnu intervenes so we're up to 3 now so then he became a tortoise and then they put the mandara hill on tortoise and then they use vasuki as the churning rope and they rotate the hill to churn the ocean and then the churning starts and then what happened next i'll pass on to other readers for the and this was the story of this incarnation and then next verses we'll see the next story uh, okay is it to explain what happened in the next verse let's see let's check it out does it doesn't explain it in the next verse exactly does it Um, okay who wants to jump in now and explain okay so vishnu carried the, he made the suggestion he carried the mountain to the ocean he supports it from the underside so it doesn't sink but what's the next problem that occurs anybody anybody know sarabi kapil does anybody know what the next problem that arises is yes prabhu ji so the first thing that comes out of the ocean was that great poison oh, no, wait, wait you're getting ahead there's another problem as soon as they start to churn the ocean it's no longer sinking but something else is happening sarabi you know rakesh bob this is in uh what is this eight canto eight canto yeah eight canto the, yeah the the demons uh, disagree to hold the tail of the snake Okay, well that's I think that's the next step, but there's something else that goes wrong. Does anybody know what it is? No? Okay, so you got the mountain here. I mean, you got the turtles, you got the turtle, and and coincidentally had an itch. The turtles turtles had an itch, and so when they put the mountain they started training it was like, ah, a little <laughs> bit to the left, a little bit to the right, you know, kind of everybody's happy, win win win. But what happened when they start churning the mountain it's okay on the bottom but it starts wobbling like crazy on the top it's going everywhere they can't stabilize it so then what happens this is the fourth time that lord vishnu intervenes what happens how does lord vishnu intervene at this point sarabi kapil Okay, Omkar, he knows the answer. I'm just looking for the. I'm just taking it as an open book exam, so I'm just looking for the book. <laughs> okay, to stop that, someone had to hold the top steady so it didn't wobble like crazy. So that Lord Vishnu personally agreed to do with Garuda. Garuda is hovering in the air, and Lord Vishnu is holding the top of the mountain steady. So that's the fourth. time that lord inner ambition of interviews and then i think then i think rakesh is talking about what happens next so after they start churning uh, then the first thing that comes out of that ocean was uh, poison and it was such a... something else i thought you mentioned it maybe somebody else mentioned it then somebody else the tail the tail the demons disagree to hold okay. the tail you remember that rakesh you remember yes that? yes prabhu so this snake vasuki so 
Lord Vishnu, he knew that when they will start churning, he is going to spit poison. Vasuki is going to spit poison. So he did not want the demigods to be on the side of the... Uh, they want, uh, Vishnu wanted the demons to hold it from the head. So he made that arrangement and, and tried to uh, put it in that way that demons, they uh, said, oh no, we want to give this tail to the demigods and we want to hold the Vasuki snake from the mouth side. And when they start uh, doing that, then the snake started spitting, the, spitting that uh, poison and that created a lot of problem for the demons because it was such a strong poison. At first, they tried to give the demons a, a nice, easy task that they would easily accept. And they thought they thought that they'll just give them the tail because there's no smoke, there's no fire from the mouth. They said, why don't you guys take the tail? And they were trying to be gracious about it, you know, to be the bigger person. But of course, Lord Vishnu knows the psychology of the demon. So he knew he knew what would happen. So they it was it was beautiful because the demigods and Lord Vishnu made a generous offer. They did not compromise the high ground. They did not give up the high ground. They made the demons a generous offer. Why don't you guys take the tail? It'll be trouble free. But they also knew that because of the demons' arrogance and pride, they would never agree <laughs> to take the tail. So they we're not going to take the tail. We should be the head, not the tail. We're we're the greatest warriors. We're the greatest diplomats. We're the richest. We're the best looking. So we'll take the head. And of course, Lord Vishnu knew all along that's what they do. Because when they took the head, then Vasuki is spitting fire and smoke and all. So they're just completely covered with all this. Their eyes are burning. They're choking. You know, it's just like now in Utah with the Oregon fires. You know, that was what happened to the demons. Okay, and then what happened? So now this count is to five, Prabhuji. So far, the count of Vishnu intervening is five. Yeah, that's five. That's that's five. And then six, six what? So they can't work now. They can't work now because it's too much smoke and fire. So what? then what's number six for Vishnu? I, I don't know, Prabhuji. Anybody know what the sixth thing Vishnu does now to make it happen? He causes rain. He causes rain so that the demons can continue to work and not be unduly disturbed by the smoke and fire. Then what happens? They're churning for some time. And then I got to put a throat mint in here. They're turning for some time, and then what happens? I guess then Rakesh mentioned the poison comes out. Not, first. not yet, not yet. Not yet. You know, yeah, we live we live in a in a pretty athletic society, especially America. America <laughs> took like a hundred and thirty gold uh, medals at the Olympics, and the next country, China, only took eighty eight. So America is very athletic, and, and there's always new uh, fields of athleticism uh, developing. I was driving to pick up some restaurant supplies in the industrial area of Salt Lake City around, uh, oh, I think it was uh, 17th South and uh, 700 West on my way to the temple yesterday. And there were two skate parks. There were two different skate parks. And the kids were out with their skateboards. And one, actually, one of them was for bicycle and one of them for skateboard. And these are now Olympic events, aren't they? These are now bona fide Olympic events. But so you're wondering, what's true talking about? What's he getting at? What's the point? So uh, churning, churning is a very uh, demanding physical activity. You know, we just go to the grocery store and we buy a gallon of milk. But when you had your own cows and then you would make butter and yogurt and cheese, you spend a lot of your time churning. And, and that takes a lot of endurance. It takes a lot of fitness to churn butter and milk into butter. So what happened 
The demons and demigods were churning, 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 and then what happened? Nothing comes up. Nothing came up, and what happened to them? Exhausted. Tired. tired. <laughs> they got tired. They got exhausted. They couldn't go on. They were going to give up. So what happened? What happened then? What is this, the seventh or the eighth intervention? I lost count. Seventh. Seventh. Lord Vishnu entered into the bodies of the demigods and the demons so that they could continue, so they could get their second win and continue churning. Now, now, Rakesh, what happened? <laughs> now, your time has finally arrived. <laughs> yeah, I was too fast. So, yes, Prabhuji, thank you for, for uh, sharing this. It, it's, it's definitely new to me. Uh, I didn't hear these uh, stories that you just uh, shared with, uh, with us. So, yeah, when the churning started and things started coming out, the first thing was the poison. And it was such a strong poison that uh, uh, it would have, like the whole universe would have destroyed if that poison comes out. And then everybody was wondering who will save us. And then uh, Lord Shiva, he accepted to to take that poison. And then Lord Shiva, he uh, even if he drink it, uh, that's a story I heard that he, he cannot even drink it. He has to hold it in his uh, throat. So he took that poison and held it in his throat. And that way, uh, the, the effect of that poison eased out and they could continue with the churning. Excellent. We used to celebrate Shivaratri before things got really busy with the color fest and all. And so uh, we wanted to show how Lord Shiva is a great devotee of Krishna. And so what did Lord Shiva say before he drank the ocean? of? Someone might argue, well, you said Krishna, Vishnu does this, 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 seven times Vishnu. Does. But really, someone may argue, how Vishnu didn't do the greatest thing. Vishnu didn't do the toughest thing. Shiva did the toughest thing. So Shiva gets the most of the credit for making sure this happened. So, so what did Lord Shiva himself say before he drank the ocean, before he drank the poison? I don't know, Prabhuji, but maybe he might have uh, took the blessing from Krishna uh, uh, for, for his mercy so he could do that. That's not wrong. That's certainly true. Any more details from anybody? Okay, he took blessings, obviously. But what he said was, he said, I'm going to do this because Lord Vishnu is always happy when you do welfare work for others. Lord Vishnu, when you when you help out your brothers in Sarva Yonishu Kantiya Murtiya Tajma Brahma Aham Bija Pradapita. Krishna is the father of all living beings. He doesn't like it when any of his sons are suffering. So the best way to Krishna's heart is to help out another person to be free from suffering and distress. The father likes it better if you help his son. Then, if you directly help the father, isn't it? If you want to get to the heart of the father, better than trying to do something directly for the father is to do something for his son. That will really capture the heart of the father. So Shiva wants to drink the poison as his devotional service, as his bhakti to Krishna. So even that, you know, and everybody says only Shiva is powerful enough. Only Shiva is powerful enough to drink the ocean. Nobody, you know, how come Vishnu didn't do it? They say only Shiva is powerful enough. But Shiva himself said, I'm going to do this as devotional service to Krishna. So however powerful Shiva is, 
he's letting us know by his prayer that he is doing this as a service to his Lord, and the Lord is always more powerful than the servant. So that's the eighth time that Vishnu could be said to intervene. All right, so what's the ninth one? Is it mentioned in this verse here? I think ninth time will be Prabhuji when that uh, nectar, uh -huh. when that nectar came out and and the demons wanted to be immortal by drinking that and how Lord Vishnu saved it with the Mohini avatar. That Maybe would be that would be the ninth one. That would be tenth, I guess, because the Dhanvantari is also the the personality who got the nectar is also avatar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dhanvantari. Then you go ahead, Prabhuji. Yeah. Dhanvatari came and he he's a god of uh he health. He's like the if you know the science of Dhanvantari of using herbs and roots and things, you can always remain in good health. That's Dhanvantari. His whole notion of Ayurveda came from Dhanvantari. Notion of what? Of Ayurveda. Ayurveda came from Dhanvantari. So so now um the 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 nectar comes out dun batari yeah that's the ninth he's holding the nectar and then uh vishnu lets the demons grab the nectar and run away and this is what the demigods were afraid of from the very beginning you know like they're they already defeated us they're already more powerful so if we make a truce with them and get the nectar what if they get it and we don't get it? And that seems to be exactly what's happening. So how does Lord Vishnu intervene for the 10th time and save everybody? You already, Rakesh already mentioned it. But does anybody want to read, Sarabi, do you want to read this next verse? It's the 17th verse. Yeah, okay. You can read the Sanskrit too in the English. There's no purport. I will read the translation then. The twelfth incarnation, the Lord appeared as Dhanvantri, and in the thirteenth, He allured the atheist by char charming beauty of woman and gave nectar to the demigods to drink. So, who was that woman? What was her name? Dhanvantri. Mohini. Mohini. Oh. No, Mohini, Mohini, sorry. Mohini. <laughs> says, what does it say? Kandarpa Koti Kamani Abhisheshasavam. Krishna is more beautiful than millions and millions of cupids. <clears throat> People often, when they come into the temple, they see, just like behind me, you see the Shaima Sundar Murti in Spanish form. People see the deity and they say, who is she? <laughs> why, why do they say who is she? Why don't they recognize Krishna as the supreme he, the supreme male, the supreme predominant? Why do they say who is she? Because of the beauty, I would say. Yeah. W would you agree with me that beauty is not a masculine quality? It's a feminine quality. So Krishna is supreme. He's not only supreme in power but he's also supreme in beauty. So that means his power doesn't come from taking supplements and steroids and <laughs> creatine and pumping iron in the gym. He's just naturally the most powerful. And because he doesn't work at, he doesn't have to work at it. And he doesn't have to train his body. He appears uh, effeminate, isn't it? He appears as if he were Weak, in fact. But because his strength comes from a spiritual source, he doesn't have to he doesn't have to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, with a lantern jaw and bulging muscles and veins popping out and a washboard stomach. In fact, that's actually grotesque. I don't really find anything attractive about that myself. So Krishna is soft. He's soft like the flower, but when when needs be, he's hard like the thunderbolt. 
So tell us what happened. What are the details? The demons were lined up, ready to drink the nectar, to gain even more supremacy over the demigods. And what exactly happened then? Do you know Rob at all? Do you know the story at all? <clears throat> Rob got a set of Bhagavatams at the temple last night. So, Rob, we're going to expect you to know these stories moving forward. Not right away. We'll give you some grace period. We'll give you some time. After, after all, this, this particular story is in the eighth canto. So, so that might take you a while to get there. But we might start grilling you on the story of the first canto in the coming weeks. Fair enough, Prabhuji. I, uh, I have not gotten a chance to, to get into them just yet, but soon, very soon. Right. You know, hey, Kale. Hey, Kale. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Kale. Say it again. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh. <laughs> As I drove out of the parking lot last night from the Salt Lake City Temple to come home, it was about 9.30 at night. The last word I heard was, my window was down, I heard Kel, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And I think he's also dancing out there in the parking lot as well. We've got a, a devotee in training there. <laughs> he helps me be more devoted just by him being around. So he's, he's picking it up a lot quicker than I could even hope for. You know that poem? The birth is but a sleep and a forgetting. The soul that rises with us, our life star, has held elsewhere its setting, cometh from afar. Not entire forgetfulness, nor in utter nakedness we come, but trailing clouds of glory from God who is our home. Heaven lies about us in our infancy. Shades of the prison house begin to close upon the growing boy. He beholds the light, and whence it comes, he sees it in his joy. And this youth who daily further from the east must travel, still is nature's priest. And by this vision, splendid is on his way attended. At length, the man perceives it fade away and die in the light of common day. The children are closer to God than we are. And we just have to make sure they don't get covered as they grow up. We have to make sure they don't get covered. Like we talked about last night, we cover our light with trivialities, with rubble with petty things. We cover the light, which is ourselves. So the light shines brightly in Kel, he dances, he chants. So our duty as parents and teachers and leaders is to make sure that not only is that light not covered, but it is fueled with more and more Krishna Kata and Prashada. But we're still waiting for the last little details before we wind up our story here this morning. Onkar, Kapito. I I know the story, but maybe I'll I would like to hear from somebody else because I'm sure they will share additional details. So I want to hear. We're almost at the end here. We're at the tenth intervention and the last one. But what happened? The de the demons got the nectar. They're lined up to drink it. And it looks like that's that's all she wrote. Looks like the demigods are stick a fork in them, they're done. Well, what happens? In spite of everything they've done, in spite of all that Vishnu's done, it looks like the demigods are gonna miss out on that nectar. So how does Lord Vishnu again save the situation for the tenth consecutive time? So Lord appears uh, in the form of Mohini and uh... Uh, like all the demigods, uh, sorry, not them, the demons, they got attracted to the beauty of the Lord and they, I think, started fighting to impress uh, Mohini and uh, <laughs> in between that fight and, and the chaos, Lord took that nectar and, and bring it back to the demigods. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what happened. Now, there was one demon who drank a little bit of the nectar. He got first line, drank a little bit of the nectar, but then before it got down to his, or maybe actually there's two different versions of the story. One one drank the nectar. Can anyone help out with details here? 
yeah, like what? Oh, go ahead and no, no, bro, you, go no, ahead. No, bro, you go ahead. <laughs> I I would I'm also not very sure, but I guess it was Rahu. Uh, yeah. the, the demons who are the enemies of uh, sun and moon, and I believe one they they got few. Uh, they started drinking it, but when the nectar was about in their throats, Lord Vishnu sent his chakra. I guess it is eleventh eleventh uh, intervention, and then he threw out his uh, he cut his neck. So the the bottom part of his body felt dead, but the the top part still remained alive. So he Lord Vishnu intentionally kept it alive just to show the, show the effect of nectar. And I believe on the full moon days or no moon days that head goes on to attack sun and moon in enmity, and that's the eclipse that we see on Earth. Excellent. Now, one version has that some of the nectar reached reached the body, and after the head was separated from the body, that lower part is K2. That's one version. That the lower part became K2, and the upper part became Rahu. But the one that uh, called them out, the one, the one that said, hey, those guys are drinking the nectar, that was the sun. That was Surya. And so Surya caused Rahu to be decapitated. So he's always angry at Surya. And so he's Rahu is a planet, a dark planet, one that we can't see. So in, when an eclipse happens, Surya tries to swallow the sun planet. But because he doesn't have a body, he doesn't have a lower body to digest. So the sun planet just comes out the back end of Rahu's head. So yeah, that would have been the 11th incarnation. Mohini used her Sudarsan chakra to cut off the head of one of the demons. Now, later on, even Lord Shiva himself, I, 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 may, I may not be exactly right, but he was with Parvati. He's with his wife. And Mohini kind of like strolls past and uh, and you know he le he's he starts nakuriyat karichit sakyam manasi and yadvira chashkanda par says never trust the mind never trust the mind the mind is so deceitful that it even caused Lord Shiva to desert his vows of fidelity to his wife and he began chasing after Mohini Atam. So even Lord Shiva who is the aesthetic he is the god of aesthetics he is the topmost yogi he lost his self-control when he saw mohini so that's a good lesson for all of us never trust the mind it says the mind is so strong and so deceitful that one should not be in a secluded place, even with one's sister or one's mother. That's how awful and treacherous the mind is. All right. Any anything else we can learn, or any other details from this verse? One thing that uh, comes to mind is uh, the sixth uh, chapter of Bhagavad Gita, where Arjuna is talking about the prowess and all the problems that comes out of mind. And then uh, Lord Krishna explains that a controlled mind can be your best buddy. And if it's not controlled, it can, uh, it can create chaos and it can make your life hell. So this is a story when we are going through all these uh, interventions from Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna, I think it's reiterate one of the powerful promise or message that Lord Krishna says in uh, sixth chapter, I think it's the 40th verse, and it goes like this, the Supreme Personality, after hearing all these questions, that mind is so strong, what should I do? And even if I am able to follow this path of yoga or follow this path of union with you, what if, if the journey uh, remains incomplete, if I'm not able to complete my journey or this path? So to answer all those questions, and often we get those questions as well. First, to develop that inclination, and at times there are obstacles 
that comes in between so people often ask of ask in a manner that when you go and buy a product or get a membership of a gym or a service or go to a doctor we ask that what are the side effects what if i am not able to do it uh, completely to which lord krishna answers that the supreme personality of god had said o son of pratha a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities doesn't meet with destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world now here comes the important message that goes well with our discussion he says that one who does good my friend is never overcome by evil and i think when you are giving an example of lord shiva and uh, him drinking the poison as an offering or service to lord uh, uh, vishnu is a great example of this that once you do that it will never overcome by any evil so i was writing all those 10 or 11 intervention and after every intervention those six prominent qualities that we see in lord vishnu or lord krishna the opulence the knowledge the fame uh the opulence knowledge fame power and then the this ability to renounce everything so the moment you said uh, the truce peace or the cease fire peace uh, him bringing him to an agreement because he knew he is omnipresent uh, omniscient he knows that what's going to come our way uh, so i think that was the message for me when i saw that first intervention when we talked about uh, mandarpa no matter how endurant we are or how powerful we are we need that support that sometimes that support comes as a help from a devotee or uh, god's him, his own intervention and he is ready to play that role of mandarpa Uh, in our life then the kurma uh, intervention that he became the base for it that again says the same thing that he is all powerful he'll take care of that he'll be there to support you then the tail and head it's again the same thing that he he knows and he is the master negotiator because often when you are in a negoc- negotiating situation you try to get the head but sometimes it's giving away that can also help you when you know the other person's uh, uh, and he knows he sits in our heart he knows that's what's going on there so i think that again says the same thing rain pro i wrote in front of rain is uh, it's the kind of blessing that he is there to shower that mercy on all of us to take care of that turbulent weather that started happening as soon as we started churning uh, this uh, then again he goes into the bodies of demigod when the endurance was Uh, going away and he shows the prowess and the power the poison uh, example i as i read from the sixth chapter is a great example of service and devotion and i always remember that it's not the best service available it's basically the service that you are uh, like people wanted you to do you follow that as a service and i think that is an amazing example drinking the poison is is the pinnacle of when you uh, of the selfness selflessness uh and the last is beauty mohini is a great example of beauty the every the, everything comes from him which is all beautiful and opulent so prabhu that is my thing but i think the core message here is he is doing it for demigods and uh, our demons or the human beings for a message the renunciation that makes him lord that makes him supreme he never tasted a bit of it because he is beyond the nectar the nectar itself comes from him so the renunciation itself makes him lord krishna and i think that's the reason we all are attracted to him and you know he could have just he could have just empowered the demigods directly and and they would have just beaten the demons but he just he just likes to have fun he he likes to work from behind the scenes he likes to em- empower his incarnations his expansions he likes to glorify his devotees and so we have this whole amazing story he could have just done the whole thing practically himself but he chose 11 different angles at which to come at this from and in the course of that he's he's glorifying his expansions he's glorifying his devotees he knows how to do such a thing things in such a way that we we have fun and we have lots and lots of subject matter to discuss and share and relish even thousands of years later So thank you all for jumping on this 
Labor Day morning, Labor Day weekend morning, and I, I, I'm looking at next week's verse, and it's about Meshringa Day. So, if you want to prepare or do any homework, just look at that seventh canto and review in your mind the story of Meshringa Day and Prahlad. Everybody want to just say a, a few a word or two about the takeaway, and then my proposal is, so that you can get mentally ready, is this may be the last time for a while that we get to hear from Omkar. So I, I, I would like you to sing the last kirtan, if that's okay. That is amazing. So I just want to say one thing, and I, I think Rakesh and I, uh, on most of other devotees here have high regards for Omkar Prabhu. We have met a lot of people in our life, a lot of devotees, a uh, lot of congregational members, and uh, we draw uh, inspiration from most of them. And all of them, I would say, in some regard or other, like the service they offer and all that great, great stuff. So there is a very big aspect of our philosophy, right? And that's what we are trying to do today, discuss, cherish, relish uh, the philosophical uh, aspects of, of, uh, of our mission, I would say. So there are a lot of people, they are so eloquent that they can come and share this nectar in a manner that it inspires you. But that inspiration may last for an evening, a month or so. And then there is a set of devotees that they live that philosophy. And Omkar, I put you in that category. Uh, there are only few of them. Uh, there are hundreds of them uh, who can share the philosophy and inspire us and educate us. But uh, what we aspire to be an Omkar who lives the philosophy. And with whole heart, I say that and I'm going to miss you. And I'm sure that Rakesh and all others uh, here on this call and otherwise are going to miss you. And what a big reward. Like it's, it's incredible. And often we use this quality and quantity thing. We always say this very loosely that it's always about quality and not so much about quantity. This is the first time I'm using that notion in a context that be it two months or two years or 20 years. Sometimes the two year can give you such a big inspiration that you were trying to gain in from your last 20 years and you, you served that motivation just by li living that philosophy. So Prabhu, that is my uh, gratitude towards you. And I'm very, 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 very lucky and uh, thankful that you came here and inspired all of us. You know, our goal is to be a servant, but mostly we, through our past conditioning and our own arrogance, we go through life really with the mood of a master, but when we see devotees and we come to the temple and we recollect the teachings and all, then we say, oh yeah, I'm supposed to do this instead of this. I'm supposed to serve instead of dominate. But you don't have any of those adjustments when you see Onkar. Here is a servant. He's, he's a servant through and through, plain and simple. He, he's not walking around in the mood of a master and then having to remind himself that he's a servant like many of the others. He is a servant. He's always projecting the mood of service. He's always offering service. He's always bowing down. He's always running here and there for on your behalf. And I think one of the things that Kapil so eloquently said is that Onkar is what we aspire to be. He is what we aspire to become. So thank you for that example. I have no doubt that wherever you go in this life, you'll have the same effect on those around you. So anything you want to wind up with, Sarabi, Rob, Rakesh? Before yeah, we... I would uh, definitely like to say that um, Omkar, is, his smile is contagious. And when you go there, he is like um, very welcoming. And you know, it, it, it always encourages you to talk to him and um, uh, like, and also the thing which, um, which I like the most, everybody comes to America to be more materialistic and he is just the opposite. So, and studying here, being so humble and so uh, gentle to everyone, that's the great quality of his. And also like every time he is standing there and greeting every single devotee, which is great, the great uh, quality of his. And I will definitely miss you, Unka. <laughs> Thank you, Sarabi. That's beautiful. Rob, 
anything? Cal, Rob and Cal. Uh, I just, I wanna express my gratitude to Onkar um, for being the first, first devotee I had uh, in personal, uh, in-person association with. He introduced me to the temple and gave me the tour and explained what was going on and, and what to do. Uh, and that was uh, on uh, the Japathon was the first time that I went to the temple and and he was he was so welcoming he was so patient he was he was just an amazing devotee and I'm so glad that he was my first experience um, with speaking with a devotee in person um, and I I'm I'm sad to see him go but I'm also very happy for him in this next step of his journey I wish him all the best thank you everybody thank you all Karen perhaps you could uh... Do one last act of grace by chanting the Maha Mantra to finish our Zoom satsang. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, sorry, I'm... Oh, sorry, Rakesh. I was waiting for my my turn. So, so when I don't have it on gallery view, sometimes it's easy to get someone slip on the cracks. No, that's totally fine, Prabhuji. I would have not uh, said it, but I don't want to miss the chance to show my gratitude for Omkar Prabhu. But before I get there, today's takeaway from the class is the way how Kapil Bhaiya summarized it so beautifully. So that's the takeaway for me, that how we should listen to a lecture, how we should be taking notes, and how we should summarize. So I will, I will try that. I always uh, see that in Kapil Prabhu, uh, so beautifully he explains everything. So I will, he definitely inspires me, but today's summary was really very wonderful. And also about Kel, when I saw Rob Prabhu and Kel yesterday, I did talk to Rob Prabhu about this. So he is such a beautiful soul, his son. He is so cute and he is definitely a very beautiful soul. I was noticing him even previous week when he was taking Aarti, this Dia. He is such a small kid, but he knows how to take that Aarti. He was doing this and taking this aarti and and even yesterday he was following the footstep of his father and when he entered the temple he bowed down so he's following so i'm sure rob prabhu needs to be thousand times careful now because he is a follower and pretty sharp follower he's following everything so i'm sure it puts more responsibility on rob prabhu as a father uh, but yeah he's he's such a beautiful soul and uh, now regarding Omkar Prabhu, um, like I have met uh, a lot of devotees in this temple in my short journey of let's say six to seven years, but I I can definitely say that if I have to think about that journey, kind of flashback, he is the first person whom I'm going to remember uh, as the true example of what what a devotee should be and as Kapil Vaya also mentioned like he is a he is a perfect example of what we aspire to be I can talk about myself that I, I would I, I definitely feel blessed and uh, that that I got a chance to meet Om Prabhu in my life and I definitely want to uh, be somebody like him and I'll be honest I don't think I'll be able to be like him at this point of time but i do pray to krishna that he give me this the humility like he has and the attitude of service that he has no matter what like i'm sure everybody visiting this temple can can relate with omkar prabhu his smile and his attitude of service whether it's a saturday program or a weekday or a big celebration like janmashtami he is there serving people at the gift store he's there serving people in cooking he's there serving people prashadam and he's the last one always the last one taking prashadam he will make sure everybody gets the prashad he makes sure that everybody is fed before he takes his plate so there is a lot to learn from him and i'm sure he's not going anywhere he will be with us many years i have to learn a lot from you prabhu so uh, you, you are not going anywhere you, you will be here. Krishna will make some arrangements. I'm going to pray, keep chanting, and you, you will not be able to go anywhere. You, you have to be here in Salt Lake City. We need you. 
thank you for inspiring prabhu actually it's it's, it's i am the one who gets inspired to be with all of you i always uh, feel very great to be with all of you that's why i i came here and i try to get your association here and uh, i feel uh, yeah not so happy to go but somehow uh, let's see as rakesh prabhu says what could happen but uh, and, but i would really whatever you, you all of you said is nothing belongs to me everything belongs to uh, my shiksha guru spiritual master and uh, lord krishna as there is a there is a song in hindi uh, it says karte hu tum kanaiya mera naam ho raha hai that roughly translates as uh, oh lord krishna you are doing all the things but somehow you are putting me in front so that my name is getting ahead so i believe that's that's my feeling that everything is done by krishna himself bringing me here and making me instrument and i am i'm just a, a helpless instrument in the hands of the lord so uh, before starting my kirtan i apologize for any mistake from my side uh, i'll do that one more time before i leave but still as uh, uh, so i'll start the kirtan uh, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Veda Taswami Iti Namine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Veda Taswami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswate Devai Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pachatya Deshatarine Namaste Saraswate Devai Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pachatya Deshatarine जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधार श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंदा जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधार श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम 
Thank you, Ankar, for the kirtan and everything else. We'll never forget you. If you ever come back, that will be a great good fortune. Otherwise, the legacy that you leave behind will always be here. You'll always be in Salt Lake City by your example, Thank by you. your wonderful personality. So we wish you all the best. You have the blessings of all the Salt Lake City devotees. Sending in your direction everything mm -hmm. good, spiritual, everything good from the material, temporary point of view as well. Godspeed. Mm -hmm. Thanks everybody for joining. We'll end now. Next week, it seems that there's a platform for talking about Prahlad Maharaj, his extraordinary level of surrender and protection by Lord Nishringadev. So we'll have a contribution to make by then. Certainly invited to do so. Take your leave now. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare.